I'm going to put this up on the website, by the way. Yep. And th because it'll be a template, but they're going to everybody will have to change the heading and and the way the thing is laid out, right? But the idea yep. is there. So basically, what you say is that you're you're annexing, that's the word, uh, these documents to this particular notice, and then they have to take it. Good. They they will read it then, but they won't read it if you just hand them an EDP. No. Yeah. Also, um, when I when I first did my first one EDP with uh, a, a blood signature, they freaked out, and they actually created an order banning any human uh, blood or saliva or anything on any document, and they would return it. So, but then they got really upset when I started using red ink thumbprint. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, it's ink. No, we don't know what it is. So you cannot use red or blood. So I am suggesting any color, blue, purple, maybe black for a thumbprint, but not uh, red or blue. Green. No, green. Green? Green? Okay. Green is the color of life. Okay. If they don't like red, they'll definitely not like green. Green. <laughs> but they're freaking out <laughs> over the, this mm -hmm. health issue, you know? Even though it's covered, they're freaking well, out over it. Oh. Well, that brings me to a point which I didn't cover in the in the chat, and that is that we're, we're, we're essentially, because we're writing to the pontiff and accelerating the end of the age of Mithra, we're saying, and it's up on the on the website now, that that no one, no one needs, including this package, no one needs to ever issue a blood seal again. And 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 the reason for that is that hundreds of valid, and they're all been valid, hundreds of valid EDPs and follow-up deeds have been issued, and they've all been dishonoured. Yep. Now, the argument that they didn't know, they didn't understand, the dog ate their homework, is all petty excuses. It's overwhelming that they don't believe their own system and they have really cursed themselves. That's the whole point. Those hundreds of EDPs has created an enormous spiritual reversal on their magic because they don't believe a single word. So everything from here on in is ink and it does not and we should not from here on in ever uh, have issued anything in blood okay right now one other issue and this is a clarification on what's going on with the uh, University of Eucadia yep somebody using wild blue apparently hijacked some of the incoming traffic uh, from U of U Yep. I and I'm using Wild Blue, so eventually I got uh turned off because of the IP uh -huh. ban. But it's still but I can get to the front page and I cannot when I manipulate inside the web page, um I get a five oh three uh service um denial. Okay. Yep. The, I did the, it. I did everything. Just... What I did was I went over to Firefox. That was using Google Chrome. I yep. went over to Firefox using the same IP address, and it, it works fine. But what initially what happened was my web route found that the website had a bug on it. I don't know how I could find it that quick, but that's what they said, and I and I told it to ignore it. But after that, it worked fine. Okay, can I can I just say? I mean, sure. we can maybe take this part offline. But um, my understanding was that that your web host, not you, your web host um, also was a, a source of um, other type of activity. So a reason I want to take it offline, Ron, is it may be ultimately because of that risk. I'll talk to Gerald, or Ger you talk to Gerald, but it may be a question of how do we make, get a workaround for you if you want to stay with that ISP provider, yeah? Right. Well, I'm in a contract. I can't get out of it. Okay, so we have to think of a way around that, Ron. We'll, we'll find out a way, but 
um, yeah, that was one of the problems. But look, thank you so much for what you're doing and um, great research, Ron. And again, thank you for all the help that you're doing for others. And by the way, just so people know, Ron is one of the, the, the groups that's helping on this package going out in uh, within the next few days to Rome. So thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you, Ron. Thanks. Okay, very good. Good discussion. All right, uh, real quick, can we go over to the chat? i got a question over here. Um, uh, how, let's see. Okay, guess five. Do you know anything about the reason Asians have slanted eyes? Um, they've been having trouble finding the origin of that trait, and they're just interested uh, in that ancient history. Well, um, if you're talking about um, the genetic origin of the predominant um, number of people that would be called um, uh, Asian, uh, it is from Tibet. So the majority of, of people who are born in China and uh, Mongolia and uh, right through into Japan and, and like that, the, the, um, have the uh, Tibetan genetics. Now, if you are living in a area of uh, high snow and you've been living there for a long, long time with high amounts of um, uh, sunlight uh, and you were at the Neoth Neolithic times and earlier did not have sunglasses, then how do you survive without going blind? Now, I've actually experienced snow blindness and it is one of the most uncomfortable feelings. Um, so um, I would suggest to you that as a matter of complete logic, um, the ancestors of, of those that we call broadly uh, the uh, Asian uh, races um, lived in areas where the, um, the body adapted to the environment which is, again, a feature that is right throughout um, the species, adapted to the environment. And one of the adaptions was to limit, to filter the amount of sunlight coming into the eyes to stop the um, man or woman going blind. And that, to me, makes perfect, perfect sense. But I do find, and I have to say this to, you, to whoever wrote that, I do find, unfortunately, the words that you use offensive, even if the question was genuine, because they, those words have been used too many times by people who want to consider an entire race of people a certain way by their physical features. So I avoided that, but I've given a, a reasonable answer. Okay. Very good, Frank. Thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, hopefully there, uh, even Eskimos would be considered to um, be dealing with those types of uh, environmental situations uh, with the snow and the sunlight. So uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So those that are in Alaska could end up with the same type of features just because of their um, surroundings and their environment. Uh, okay, question on the phone. Alpha 999. Are you there? Alpha 999, you're unmuted. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm not hearing you, Frank. Okay. So hopefully they can get back in the queue. Pressing star 8 will put uh, anyone that's on the phone lines into the question queue. All right, next question on the uh, chat. Are you recommending now that we no longer emit the pronuncio docs and others at a national level? Uh, we, we ask as our country's authorities have behaved quite adversely and belligerently to our documentation. No, I'm not saying that people should stop asserting a claim of right. I didn't say that. What I said was, the use of blood signifying an ancient rite of Mithra, 
as written in the current version of scripture in Leviticus, dating back to a period as early as the 6th century BCE, is at the heart of the present claim of power and authority of the banks and the judiciary. When they ignore instruments sealed in blood, they disavow three times through our documents. They disavow three times all papal bulls. They disavow the very robes they wear. They disavow the very authority they claim. They disavow the very system they belong to. Now, if they do that in ignorance or they say, no, that's all rubbish, what you sent to us is gobbledygook, it's not in the form, ignorance is no excuse. That's one of their arguments to us. Ignorance is no excuse. We've given them a heads up and they don't believe it. They don't deserve to be a judge. They don't deserve to be a banker. They don't, certainly don't deserve to be a minister or anyone in a position of authority. And what we have done is proven their dishonour before the divine creator. That's why we did it. We did it to prove, have evidence that when we come to the end of the year and judgment, that everything has been done lawfully to the divine. But quite frankly, when we're dealing with stupid people, I don't personally care whether they believe it or not. That's their problem. But we are ending the age of Mithraism. We're ending something that has been in place for thousands of years. Do not stop the process just because we've changed the ceiling. The ceiling has been accelerated because the age truly come Pentecost in two weeks has ended. It has ended, whether they believe it, accept it or not. History will be our judge. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, so, so basically, I think that question was regarding um, moving forward with uh, documentation, and uh, that was someone from Me New Mexico or Mexico. So um, back to our guest that had the, the question regarding the plea hearing. Um, it looks like we may have another question here. Um, so says they've been studying and haven't had a birth certificate to file the EDP, so can they plea under duress, then go to trial and claim title? Look, you can... Uh, the, the claim of right runs parallel to your court case. I would suggest that the, the ecclesiastical deed process at the moment is not going to affect the way the court deals with you because the courts to date, by and large have ignored the EDP process. They've ignored it. So it's not material to your court case. So um, pleading under duress is something that can be used in your court case at any stage where you feel that you are being harassed, um, threatened, or placed under duress. You can state that and request that it's put on, on the record. And if the judge has been called to be on oath, then the judge must recognise that such actions are unlawful and grounds for dismissal. But the, the EDP process can occur as you get your birth certificate whenever. It's just a claim of right. That's its key point. It's a claim of right, which simply says that you are no longer prepared to be known as a lawful slave. You are willing to manage your own accounts, and that if the system refuses, then they then have to pay the bills. So please, there is no reason for you to stop. When you get your birth certificate, there's no reason for you not to go ahead and do that, but it is a parallel and, an, and, and a separate process. Okay? Very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, back to Alpha 999 then. Uh, we'll see if they can... Come on board here and ask a question. You're on yeah. mute, Alpha. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes can hear can. you. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, some of the questions that I ha some of the questions that I have are, are sort of been answered somewhat, but um, I, I'm involved with a family situation, 
with family.